It is Tuesday, March 5th. Lousy March weather. But not just any Tuesday, kids. It's Fat Tuesday, or as they call it in New Jersey, Chris Christie Day. But it's what they call it in New Orleans that makes this day truly special. Oh, it's Mardi Gras, baby! Where ya? Yes, today we celebrate all the great Mardis. Feldman, Balin, Brenneman, Cordova, Markowitz, McSorley, McFly, Rogowski? It's my dad. So grab yourself a fistful of beads and a basket of beignets. I'm gonna call my crew, you go call your crew. We can rendezvous at the end of this HQ. It's time to play, baby! HQ Trivia, the game show where you answer questions to win cash live on your phone. I am King Rex of Answers Corrects, leading this askerade. Scott Rogowski live at Tipitina's, greasing the poles with all 370,000 plus of you, including Casey Melissa, who pulled over to play Titanic trivia last night, and my sister Raina celebrating her birthday. I'm not gonna say how old. Tonight, I'm asking a full stack of 12 questions. If you get them all right, you're walking away from this parade with a share of our prize, which is a whopping, a flopping, a 5,000 doubloons. Think of all the moon pies and king cakes you can rake in with that stack. Do you have an extra life? It's gonna help you out, maybe. You can maybe get a three pack, huh? One for tonight? Yeah. One for tomorrow night? What's happening tomorrow? Oh, Taylor Swift night on HQ? <laughs> yeah, you gotta get Swifty. Oh, you gotta get Swifty in here. It's time to get Swifty. Uh oh. Yes, tomorrow HQ belong to me. Taylor Swift trivia, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And maybe get one for Thursday night. Following Taylor, we're going Golden Goyles, Ruth, Blanche, Dorothy, and my favorite, Sophia Getty up with Estelle Getty on Thursday. But right now, we have some immediate quizness to attend to. It's a carnival of questions on this Mardi Gras. Hey, 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 Pocky Wee. Laissez les bon temps HQ lay. Let's get down to the nitty gritty with over 400,000 of you now live around the world. Let's get this show on the road. Happy Mardi Gras, Cumero, and numero uno. Where is the world's famous Louvre Museum? Paris, on a roller coaster or in a volcano? Don't think too hard now. Louvre, that sounds French. Paris also sounds French. Put de et de together and you get the right answer. Paris, Paris, bien sûr. Home of la Jaconde, Mona Lisa. But more importantly, location for J and Bay's Ape S Hit video. 374,522 going ape out the gate tonight. Getting cute too. What is the primary ingredient in gasoline, milk, matcha, or petroleum? Dame, dame. And dame mangasolina, and dame mangasolina. Matcha seems to be popping up everywhere these days, but you won't find it on pump three. In some countries, they call gasoline petrol. That's because it's derived from petroleum. You gotta distill that ish. 369,879. Guzzling Q3, putting some Vaseline on for Q3. Lubing up. Which is most commonly part of a film's post-production? Editing, casting, or writing? Oh, you know, in film lingo, post means after. I guess it means that outside of film, too. Production is the actual filming. You gotta write the script and cast the actors before you can edit anything. Editing is your answer here. Edit and forget it. Edit. 340,969, got this right. 24,000, I wish I wish we could fix this in post for you, but we're live. Can't do that. Got to give you Q4. Which name did Kanye West and Kim Kardashian not give to one of their children? Prince West, Saint West, or Chicago West? If you weren't looking, Kim and Kanye have been making babies lately. Three of them to be exact. And true to their A-list status, they gave them all unusual names. The oldest is a daughter named North. Youngest is a daughter of Chicago. The middle is son Saint. Naming your kid Prince is a Michael Jackson thing, and we're definitely staying away from that. 188,211, uh, you princes of this quiz tonight. Oh, but a lot of you thought Chicago was not a, no, no, Chicago. Chicago, Chicago, that title in town. I'll be there Friday night if you live there, but it's not the right answer. Q5, 
We're moving on. The first Nike TV commercial in 1982 showed people excelling in what sport? Basketball, skateboarding, or running? You know, most shoe brands don't snag a big athletic endorsement right off the bat. You gotta introduce yourself with the basics, 80s computer graphics, and people using the product in the most fundamental of ways, by running. Now let us see, in detail, the peculiarities of style, the dynamics of foot stride. And at Nike, we're putting that knowledge to work. Run from me, darling. Do, do, do. Run, my good wife. 99,395 are running like an antelope. Out of control tonight. Run. Run. Getting Q6. Run away, run away, run away. Where on a duck would you typically find a speculum? Feathers, beak, or feet? Now, there are a lot of definitions for speculum. I would suggest you do not search for it in Pornhub. Did you finish speculating on the right answer? A lot of ducks are rather colorful, especially that patch of feathers on the secondary wing. Ducks got those colorful patches on the feathers. That's called the speculum. Yeah, speculum. That's the only definition I'm gonna stick with right now. Oh, and I'm gonna say a new definition for speculum is savage. Because we got our first savage question of the night and a most savage question at that. Oh, the HQ manatee. 13,722 are spreading their wings and taking flight to Q7. Past the halfway point we go. Which of these musicians has written a Broadway musical about the shipbuilding industry? Elton John, Sting, or Meatloaf? taking a hard starboard turn, hopefully out of savage territory for this one. The show was called The Last Ship, and it ran for only four months in 2014 on the Great White Way before they turned off all the lights, including the red one. The answer, the answer is Sting. Red light. It's kind of clever. 12,177. Not feeling the sting yet. He wrote the music and lyrics Sting did for this musical, but he could not write that ship. Oh, zinger. Q8, what was the Hoover Dam formerly known as? Grand Coulee Dam, the Glen Canyon Dam, or the Boulder Dam? Damn, damn, damn. All three of these dams, like Elton John, are still standing, but one of them has undergone a rebranding, and that was over 70 years ago. Okay, so don't go asking the locals around the Arizona-Nevada border where the Boulder Dam is. It's been called the Hoover Dam since 1947. Boulder Dam, therefore, is your answer here. 9,328 wham, dam, thank you, ma'am. Damn the torpedoes. We're going to Q9. Ooh, it's getting exciting. 9,000 left here. The star of which television show was once roommates with Robert Downey Jr.? 24, the young Pope, or two and a half men? Iron Man may count Emilio Estevez, Charlie Sheen, and Rob Lowe as classmates from Santa Monica High School, but in his post-grad Hollywood apartment, it was always Jack Bauer Power Hour, as he was rooming with Kiefer Sutherland, star of 24, of course. Oh, ho, 24 is your answer here. Charlie Sheen, Jude Law, friends of Robert Downey, but not the answer. 5,862. Getting this one right, the rest of you saying, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. I'm feeling pretty good. And so are the 5,000 plus getting Q10. The piece of music known as Infernal Gallop is associated with what famous dance? Tango, Can Can, or Lambada? Yeah, I got a fresh haircut. I'm feeling real good on this Tuesday night. Oh, I love this song. This tune was originally included in an 1858 operette called Orpheus in the Underworld, composed by Jacques Offenbach. But you knew that. Maybe it'd help if I sung along. Oh, can you do the can-can? If you can, then I can. I can can-can. If you can can-can, you can can. Oh, I mean, those aren't, those aren't really the lyrics, but that really is the answer. Can-can. Get your can-can, get your can-can. 4,628. Look a pie pie on this Mardi Gras. Hey, spy boy. You're getting Q11, the penultimate question. Tonight, tonight. Where would you find a subtrahend? Underwater in a math problem or on the human shoulder? Subtrahend. You ever seen one of these? A subtrahend? Oh, I bet you have. Whether you knew it or not, you can't have one without a minuend nearby. And when you put them together, that makes all the difference. Because a minuend minus a subtrahend equals a difference. It's, it's in a math problem. 
That's where you find that one. And 4,089 had no problem with that one. Cruising through 11 questions. But before this parade ends on this Mardi Gras, Big Chief's got one last question for you. That's right. Crew up. It's Q12. It all boils down to this. Get those beads ready, folks. I might just be taking off some articles of clothing if, if you get this one right. I don't know if that's... Can we clear this with the FCC? Are we good with that? Q12. Which of these countries is not home to a massive desert whose name translates to waterless place? Mongolia, Botswana, or United States? Not home. So two of them are home to one of these deserts, and one is not. Watch me, watch me roam like Gobi. Lucky they don't know me. We're the safe show me, homie. Talking about the Gobi Desert, of course. That's in Mongolia. Gobi translates to waterless place, so that's one. Botswana has a big desert, too. The Kalahari, which also means waterless place. That's two, leaving U.S. as the A. U.S. is A. 1,669. You're our big winners, baby! Woo! Congratulations to 1669 of you, sissy strutting all the way to the winner's circle. Ooh, you done did it. You done did it good, boy. B. Trinks, Tamster, Derek Hall, J. Tip, Easy Life, Chris Hizzle, Cameron. Hey, Cameron's got a nice looking avatar there. Me with us, me with a. <laughs> That's from the, the hot sauce night with that yogurt. That was a spicy one. Hey, three bucks. Go buy yourself. Buy yourself some uh, moon pie. Get yourself a, a beignet. Cafe du Monde. Go down there. Down New Orleans. That's the best I can do. Should I start? Should I start taking up? Well, hey, stick around. Words, are, words is coming your way. 9.30. 15 minutes from now with Anna, the voice, Royceman. Yes, sir, Bobby Weir. And Taylor Swift, that's tomorrow. Don't forget, Golden Girls, Thursday night. Until I see you again, manana. I am Scott Rogowski, signing off saying, as for me, I was born and bred here in the mean streets of New Orleans. Oh, sure, I left briefly to take that principal's job in Springfield. But in my heart, I've always been a small-time hustler. Bye! Woo! Oh, my shirt's off. You can't see it now. Oh, boy. I'm looking. Woo-hoo! <laughs>